Hi everybody, thank you for watching our show here on YouTube. Remember, after you watch, remember to subscribe. And to share. Yes. Bye bye. Bye. And welcome to today's Love Talk Show with me, Helena. And with me, James. Today we're talking about love at first sight. A lot of people talk about this and they yeah. say they've experienced it. And it's a big deal for them. It's a big deal. And actually, most people think that the right way to start a relationship is to start with love at first sight. If it doesn't start with love at first sight, then something's wrong. It means well, you don't have those butterflies. It means it, it, it's not how it's supposed to be. Was it love at first sight with you? No. <laughs> I liked you first, first time. Well, of course, I liked you too. But I liked you a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, let's see what's coming up on today's show. <laughs> Coming up on today's program, we'll be answering some more of your love and relationship questions on Dear Love Talk, and this week's One Minute Bulletin involves a new Guinness World Record that has recently been broken. Plus, all our fantastic Love Talk regulars are here, including today's trip for two, where Tapiwa and Yasma will be going head-to-head -head in the final challenge for this year at the Sozai Cooking School in London. And last but certainly not the least, we'll be meeting our special guest couple, Yemi and Abjula Abiodun, who will be telling us their story right here on our program. But first, it's back to you, James and Helena, for this week's Dear Love Talk. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dear Love Talk, the part of the program where we take our time to answer anything you have or anything you send at us to do with your love life. And mm -hmm. be ready because we try to be as frank and direct as possible. Yes, definitely. If you want an answer, you will get one. But also, <laughs> I don't know how this sounded, but yes, I mean what I said. Um, but something else I wanted to say is that if you write to us and you do not wish your question to be on the show, please let us know and we will just reply to you you know, uh, on the email, and that's it. Please that's right. let us know, okay? So let's go for the first question. And by the way, the email you can write to is questions at lovetalkshow.tv. The first one says, I'm going through a very difficult time in my marriage. My husband cheated on me for the second time, and he just came back home from living with his lover for eight months. I want to save my marriage, but don't know how. Well, ay, ay. let me be very honest with you. You know, when you get married, when you start a relationship, the first time you allow something to happen, whatever that is, whether it's unfaithfulness, whether it's the person to speak to you in a certain way, uh, to raise their voice at you, to or be to abusive, push to push, whatever it is. Once you accept something a first time, that becomes the rule of thumb for the relationship. The person who did that to you knows that you accept that. So he'll keep on doing it. Now, if you've accepted him to cheat on you once and you took him back, and now you're taking him back a second time after he lived eight months with another lover, what you're telling him is that he can go and do this a third time. And it's up to you what you want your relationship in your life to be. But if you carry on this way, you are not saving mm -hmm. your marriage. Sometimes in order to save a marriage, you need to save yourself first. And it may be that there is no marriage to save in the future because certainly this person you, you, you are with has a problem because he's unfaithful to you, he's been unfaithful to you on more than one occasion. But perhaps you need to say to yourself and to this person, I'm sorry, I value myself, I'm better than this, and I don't depend on you in order to survive. Mm -hmm. So please move on with your life and I move on with mine. And perhaps if you really want to save that marriage, this will be the wake-up call he needs. But the question is, 
Should you want to save a marriage where the person has repeatedly been unfaithful to you? I think that's the question you need to answer. Yeah, I'm trying to actually, I'm listening to what you're saying and I'm trying to come up with some other explanation as to why this doesn't sound right. And I could come up with something. Try to imagine, yeah? You are very hungry and you are asking someone, please give me food. And the person says to you, hold on a second, I'm going to feed myself first and my friends. And if there is anything left, I'll, I'll see what I can do for you. And then the person goes like, oh, thank you so much. So basically, you are happy with the crumbs. You are mm -hmm. happy with the leftovers of that man. Uh, I, I wanted to, be, uh, to come up with a more shocking example, but I don't want to be rude. But this is what I mean. You are making him not respect you at all. Yeah. And I don't know, I can only imagine his conversation with his lover, like, oh, please don't leave me. Oh, you know, I'm going back to her because, you know, mm -hmm. she can always cook for me and wash my clothes. You know, she's, she, she can help me. I'll see you whenever I can. Yeah. It, is that what you want? And, and also taking him back is just saying to him that if he does this again, hmm. you're gonna take him back again. So That's I think rather than asking the question, um, how do I save my marriage? Hmm. You should ask, should you be saving this marriage? But that is a question only you have the answer for. Yes. Second Next question. question. It says, I just started dating a couple of months ago and I have, I have laid down some rules that my boyfriend should only use social media when I am around. Mm -hmm. I have also asked him for his password to all his accounts, but he seems to think I'm coming on too strong. And he is right. <laughs> no, this is not part of the question. This is me saying it. Mm -hmm. He is absolutely right. Because... First, you need to learn to trust, and he needs to see that from you and vice versa. There are things that you need to establish before you move on to that stage of a relationship. Trust, uh, and so many other things. But mm -hmm. let's talk about trust here. If you are already so suspicious, or I don't know who wrote this question, maybe you've been to one of our seminars and you heard us say, that couples should have everything in common. You should, you should know uh, each other's passwords, you know, just to protect your marriage and avoid misunderstandings. But you are not married yet, mm -hmm. and you've only been dating for a few months, so take it easy. You're gonna yeah. scare the person away. And, and I think this shows that you have some issues. <laughs> you have issues with trust mm -hmm. and, and trusting the person who's with you, right? If the guy hasn't given you any reason for you not to trust him, then why, why go through all these things? Yeah. And, and the important thing is, yes, like Elena says, we do say in our seminars that when you're married, then there's no secret. So Elena has my passwords, I have hers, but we don't do that to control each other. We do that because there's nothing that's mine that's not hers. You know, whatever's hers is mine. And because our account is a joint account, so I want to get to my messages also, as well. <laughs> but even, for example, even my, my email address, she has the passwords for that. I have the password for hers, not that I use it. But it's just that it's, we have everything in common. But if you start a relationship and you start demanding things like this from someone that you haven't met for too long, that shows that you have a lot of insecurities. Mm -hmm. You have issues that you haven't dealt with and you think that the best way to deal with these issues is to demand from the yeah. person to be completely open to you about things that he shouldn't be open about right now. Mm -hmm. At this stage of the relationship, this is still something which is very much part of his life in private. So I think you, you, you shouldn't be asking, am I coming on too strong? Yes, you are, but also, Find out why you're doing this, because there are issues you are ignoring that I don't know what they are, and you need to scan your life and see where this is coming from, because it's coming yeah. from something that happened to you. And, and maybe what you, what you think is this, I've got to know who this guy is, you know, I need to know if he's a serious guy, if he's, you know, into uh, flirting and all that. But listen, the best thing you can do to know someone, pay attention, the best thing you can do in order to know someone, be it a friend, a partner, anyone, is to give them freedom. Give them freedom and see what they do with it. 
Mm -hmm. And that's when you see people's true colors. That's right. So that's my advice for you. And on that note, that's the end for our advice for the questions of Dear Love Talk here today. If you want to get in touch, send us any question you have to our email address, questions mm -hmm. at lovetalkshow.tv or contact yeah. us via our Facebook page. Until next time, bye-bye. Bye. Well, we're all for openness and, you know, being transparent, but I think if the person started a relationship with you a couple of weeks ago and wants all the passwords to your social media... It's a no-no. That's a little bit too much, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, it, it, already, it, it already shows that you don't trust the person and you are ready, you, you come in on too strong. And, and that's a sign of things to come. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> a sign of what's going to happen in the future if you stick together with that person. So be careful. Yeah, okay? definitely. Now, we, as you know, we're talking about love at first sight today. And some time ago, we went to the streets of London to talk to people about this subject. Here's what most people have to say about today's topic. So do you believe in love at first sight? Uh, why or why not? Um, I don't really believe in love at first sight. I think I believe in lust at first sight because a lot of relationships are start off on lust and being attracted to somebody and then it turns into love or can turn into love. So Disney makes a good case, I think. And, you know, I hope we'd all want to still believe in Disney. Having said that, um, I'm not so sure. Sometimes it might be lust at first sight. I have yet to experience it, but you know, I'm holding out. I believe in lust. I believe that you can fall in lust with someone. I'm not so sure you can fall in love at first sight. My husband, it took us six months before we got together. So I'll have to say yes. I wouldn't say I've, I've experienced it. Maybe I kind of have because I got in a relationship with someone very fast. So that is probably my love at first sight. Um, so. Yeah, I think if you have a date and you meet a person and it's really clicking, I think just take it forward as such at first, you know? So yeah, that's me. That's what I would say. Uh, I'd, I'd, I definitely believe that exists because I've seen it twice. Um, personally or? Personally, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think it, ca it happens to me every day on quite a small scale. Not that I'm in love with someone where I want to marry them and have their babies, but <laughs> I could be on the tube um, and have eye contact with a girl and there's something there and then never see her again. So I go through like, being in love and then breaking up and then never see her again, all within minutes. But definitely exists. In your opinion, if someone looked at you intensely uh, or in a different way every now and again, would you think they would be interested in you? Why, why not? Oh, um, well, I get, do get a few stares every now and again, sometimes from not very welcome admirers, you know, when you get the people who just don't stop looking at you. But I mean, if somebody I really liked, I normally go retreat into my shell slightly. If I really fancy them or I'm attracted to them, I tend to be quite shy. I just find it quite weird. I think those signals are so difficult to pick up on. Especially if I'm in a workplace, I'm trying to get work done and somebody's staring at me, I'd probably think they want something, some help or something, and I'd find it quite annoying. This is terrible, but it probably would depend what they look like. If they were really good looking, I might be really flattered, and if they weren't, I might think, you're a creep. <laughs> I think I would. I think it's a universal sign of being interested in someone. Yeah, I, I, I think I'll definitely want to follow it up and just see to know why. So you know the saying, you can look, but you can't touch? Is looking at the opposite sex as bad as touching if you were in a relationship? Oh, interesting. Mm, no, because I also look at men and I think I would still do that if I was in a relationship. I think, you know, just don't touch, don't act on it. But you can still look. I mean, I'm against the male gaze. So <laughs> in that way, I would totally condemn objectification of women <laughs> by looks. But if I was in a relationship and he looked at a hot girl, I'd be like, yeah, she is hot. I think, yes, it can be. But I think it's double standards. You know, if a man slaps a woman's backside, it's sexual harassment. But women are quite touchy-feely and hands-on, you know, they can be. And um, I think looking at somebody, there's nothing wrong with, you know, but I think uh, touching is a bit too, going too far, you know? I think it's not okay, but I think it is, I think there's a fine line. I think it's a lot worse if, you're groping someone or touching someone, but if you're looking, you can't help looking. But I think if you're if you're being a bit 
of a creep about it, it's not okay. It's nowhere near as bad. Um, yeah, it's not, not as bad. <laughs> you can't not look at other people, even if you're in a relationship. Yeah, I think it's looking, it's not a bad, it's not as bad. Obviously, it goes down to the intent in there. Um, so, you know, if you're, I, I think you're going to come across beautiful ladies, whether you're in a relationship or not. And I think your partner could appreciate that. Um, looking with an intent is a different thing. But yeah, it's, t it's still two different things, but yeah. Well, well. So the first three people said they didn't believe in love at first sight, even though I'm sure deep down they may be holding out for it. Uh, although one of the ladies there was married. But there was the one guy who says he falls in love at first sight every day and breaks up at first sight every day. <laughs> oh, and, and I think that's so much suffering. I, I think that's the problem. The problem with people who believe in love at first sight, <laughs> it's, it's a very quick turnaround of relationships, mm. right? Because it, it happens so fast and, and, you know, they say, I'm in love. It also ends very fast. And I think that's the, the story of love mm. at first sight relationships. It's like, I don't know, because... It's like, well, especially that young man, he's, he goes through so many emotions mm -hmm. every day. But you know something? People say you can't help it, but you can. You just have to control your thoughts. Because if you look at someone and you start imagining things and how beautiful he is or she is and oh, we could be together, you will always be uh, mm -hmm. in trouble. It's like you are always in love with everybody, anyone who is nice to you. I mean, mm. there's a and, problem there. There's and, a deep problem. And people say that people who have this kind of behavior, they're hopeless romantics. They're no, not. They they're just not. don't have a clue what love is because love is not that. It's not going down, down that avenue that we just mm -hmm. uh, spoke about now. Anyway, we're going to meet a couple who have a story that may not be very much in line with love at first sight after the break. We'll have to go for a break now. But afterwards, you're going to get to meet this couple with a very interesting story of how they came together. Don't go anywhere. Did you know that our seminars are now on Thursdays? That's right. Every Thursday at 8 p.m., we are at Finsbury Park at the Rainbow Theater here in London. And we want to help you to build a successful, long-standing relationship. Indeed, you can also book an appointment to see us personally, and we're gonna do everything we can to help you. And also, should you have any questions, please email us on questions at lovetalkshow.tv. Welcome back. Today, we are talking about love at first sight, whether it exists, how do you cope with it if you feel that you're uh, in love with someone and you just met them. Mm -hmm. And we have um, a couple who will be talking to us about this story and, and to let's see... find out if they... Exactly, to see if they went yeah, through this. So exactly. I want to introduce you all to Yemi and Rudula. Welcome, guys. Hello. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling that you, Rudula, are going to be the more talkative one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. But <laughs> guys, you've been married for how long? 15, 15 years? 15 years. He never remembers. 15, <laughs> 15 years, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, was it love at first sight? Definitely not, no. What about for you? On, what on about her, for on you? On her side, she would say no. On my side, I wouldn't say love at first sight, but I would say that I liked her at first sight. A lot. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and for oh, those, right. <laughs> for those who, who don't know, this is just a little bit of trivia. You, Yemi, you used to play football for I, Norwich. So, Norwich. I was a youth at Norwich, and I turned professional at Southend United. Okay. But that had no bearing in you no. wanting to be with him? No, no actually, it My didn't. My God, what it, does it, it take didn't to work. impress this lady? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was, <laughs> she was a tough nut. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you, if you didn't have love at first sight, but you... You've been married now for 15 years, so something must have made it work. What we want to find out first is what happened that you went from not even considering him to then changing your mind. What happened? Um, well, initially when I saw him, of course, it wasn't love at first sight. It wasn't even like at first sight. It was just, okay, another uh, young boy around or a young man. 
Um, but then we started working together. Mm -hmm. And then that was where I saw his personality, his character, and I liked it. Mm. So I thought, OK, um, I like it, but still not, as, not enough to mm. make something of it. But then we spent more time together. We, we would just go out for general, like, a coffee or something like that whilst we were working or before or after. And then I thought, no, he, he is quite... He's, he's all right. Mm -hmm. But by that time, <laughs> it's quite so funny. He, so you went from not considering him to saying he's all right yeah. to... But, yeah. but let me ask you, what caught your eye? What made you think he's all right? He what was, was a the gentle quality? man. He was a gentle... You know, usually we... <laughs> going out or you, you know, you, you do things, you see the personality of a person. And sometimes guys can slip up in ways of like, maybe uh, commenting on a lady that walks by or just saying mm -hmm. something that's really inappropriate and ugly. Mm -hmm. But I never saw that with him. And I thought, mm -hmm. okay, this is, this is okay. All right. But, yeah. <laughs> but by that time, he had kind of calmed down in showing that he, he had any feelings, which even turned out to be me then saying, oh, remember those feelings? Yeah. Where are they? And, and, <laughs> and, and this thing, actually, this is the thing that usually happens, right? Yes. When, when the guy is too eager... You know, it, it puts the girl off, but then when he steps back a little bit, yeah. it's like she misses that attention and then something... It's exactly, exactly that. Mm, good so that's what happened. Home. Yeah, that is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> end of story. And then that, from there, yeah, it was at the end. And then I, I, I do remember actually asking him, oh, remember, because he, he asked me out, I think it was, and I was like, no, I don't think so. But then it turned out that I had to end up asking him, like, do you remember <laughs> when you asked me? And then he was like, how yeah. long? How long after he asked you out? Um, I think it was about two months or so, two months. And then mm -hmm. I said, oh, remember that day? I'm considering it's worth it now. It's waiting, you see? It's worth waiting. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, we, we want to hear from you now. So you, you, guys, uh, you, you guys got married. Right? Yeah. You have very different personalities. Is it fair to say that? Yeah, we yeah. do. What, what, what's different? Uh, well, linking with the way that I, let's say, got her, I was very persistent, mm -hmm. perseverant. Uh, I think that played a huge part because she, she showed me that she didn't like me. Um, I told you as well. Yeah, you, <laughs> she told me that she didn't <laughs> like me. So it, I couldn't take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, it's not being uh, arrogant, but I kind of knew that if I persevered a little bit, I might have a chance of, <laughs> you know, her saying yes to me. So right. I think in that sense, uh, our person, not that she's not determined, but our person is different to the, to the point where I think that she, she sees that how determined I am. OK, so you, we, we know by now that you guys, it wasn't love at first sight. It was more, love, more like a, a slow burn. So then you got married. You are, you are very different. When you got married in the beginning, did you go through clashes, through... I mean, yeah. what were the clashes? Because well, everyone there goes through clashes. There of clashes. I, well, I would say, uh, in terms of personality, he's very quiet, reserved. Um, not quiet with people that he knows, but, you know, when you, you meet first, someone for the first mm -hmm. time, you're not, he's not really, ah, yeah, but I am. So that caused issues, because it was, uh, you're too loud. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, this is normal, this is fine, it's, mm -hmm. it's me. Uh, I'm very family orientated, which he, he, I have a big family, he has a small family. So sometimes my, my sisters will come around and he'll be like, they're around too much. And I'll be like, oh my <laughs> God, <laughs> we need privacy. So, well, if your normal. sisters are watching the program and they didn't know he said that, now they know. Now they know. <laughs> Sorry, guys, but I think they know. Um, it's common sense. So, yeah, but yeah, we didn't see it like that at the time. So it was just all these c cultural clashes. There were just loads of different types of Huge clashes. Mm -hmm. But it was mainly the culture and the, my outgoing personality, and his very reserved personality, that clashed quite a lot. Yeah, because I grew up as an only child. Oh, that mm -hmm. explains it. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And then all of a sudden... What a shock. I'm marrying her, <laughs> not realising that I'm marrying the whole family. <laughs> <laughs> Because yeah, you inherit everything when you yeah, marry. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, and it wasn't like that on her side. She didn't really have much contact with my family, much of my family getting involved. Yeah. Mm. Whereas in her case, her sisters would always be at her house. She'd always be on the phone with her sisters and so on and so forth. So, and plus the part that I'm Nigerian and yeah. she's... Uh, West Indian. Yeah. Mm. So it was just, yeah, there was yeah. lots of cultural clashes, <laughs> uh, 
the way he would expect me to do things. And I'd be like, no, or expect, for example, to call the elder's auntie or something. That would be a big thing. <laughs> and I'd be like, why do I need to call? She's not my auntie. I'm not saying it. And then he'll be like, but it's respect. And I'd be like, oh. So how did you resolve these differences? How did you... Because this happens to every couple. Even yeah. if you are from the same country, uh, there's a different... Maybe you were brought up in a different way. I mean, chances are we, mm -hmm. all, we all are. Mm -hmm. So how did you make it work? Because that's... People at home are watching and they are thinking, yeah, I'm going through the same or I've been through, but I, I'm not over this yet. How mm. did you make it? Or are you still working on it? Or how, how is it now? Um, well, I just think it's as the years go by, you get to understand why uh, both of you are different. Yeah. And you you consider the fact that you're not going to separate because of differences. So let me try to work on these differences so that we can accommodate each other's character. So I just think it was a thing of saying, OK, you, you don't like that, so let me stop doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, or let me do it less or let me cut down on things instead of just saying, that's me, that's who I am, and that's it. If, if mm -hmm. you want it, you have mm -hmm. it. If you don't, you leave it. So we just kind of worked. Yeah, what, what helped a lot was that she won my mum over because my mum is a really... Good one. <laughs> ..tough, <laughs> traditional um, Nigerian lady. And she won her over. They became like... She became like my mum's daughter. Yeah. Mm. So that really helped me to feel more relaxed and... You know, Let that, me just that tell the lot. ladies at home that this is something I tell the ladies who come for the marriage courses that we hold. Tip number one, okay? The you and his mom, you need Stick to be best, mom. best friends because she knows everything about him, everything mm. that he likes and doesn't like. She's your best. <laughs> Guys, now I have um, a final question for, for each of you. Similar question. So we're talking about love at first sight, but you, yeah, I mean, you liked her a lot in the beginning. She didn't um, fall head over heels for you, shall we say. Uh, would your advice to people who perhaps are interested in someone and that person doesn't look at them in the same way, would, you, at, would your advice be at least try to persist a little bit in the beginning, try to, to get the person to see a different side to you? Would that be your advice or just walk away? No, I would say, you know, to persist a little bit, Mm -hmm. Not to be annoying, mm -hmm. not to be too much. Because that, that, that's what put her off in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if it doesn't work out, um, as they say, there's always other fish in the sea. Mm -hmm. So they're not the only person in the world. You know, if you really like the person, there's nothing wrong with expressing, expressing to them that you like them. Mm -hmm. If you're showing that you're interested in them and it's not working, so then it's time to look somewhere else. Right, but at least try to persist a little bit. At least try, there's nothing okay. wrong with trying. I not, tried. Not, <laughs> and you were not persisting in calling the person every day, but in different ways, showing the person who you are. Mm -hmm. And you, Drudula, I mean, do you think um, it's, it's fair to say that if someone has an interest, interest in you and you may not necessarily like the person, perhaps give the person a chance, at least give them the benefit of the doubt or spend a little bit more time with them to see if something can develop there or don't even try? Oh, definitely. I'll say give it a try. You know, usually as a woman, you have this perspective of how you want your man to be. But the, there the type, comes a time, right? yeah, there comes a time that you have to say, come on, put the fantasy aside. This mm -hmm. is very important, yeah. <laughs> what, what you're saying. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Definitely. <clears throat> Put the fantasy aside and say, let me get to know. If, it, if it's not what I want, then I'll move yeah. on. Because you do know. At least give him a chance. Exactly. <laughs> <Yes, laughs> yes. You're happy she gave you a chance. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but the interesting thing is, uh, just to make a final point, when you say put the fantasy aside. Some people think, well, but I'm not going to settle for less than what I want. But you're not settling for less. It's just that sometimes people have this idea of how a man or a woman will come into your mm. life and mm. it's going to be in this magical <clears throat> way. Mm. And it doesn't work like that. And no. sometimes, you know, it, like we just said, instead of a um, love at first sight, but instead of that, a slow burn mm. has a much more better chance uh -huh. of making things work. Yeah, because something she said is very important is that they started working together. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I don't know if she, you said that off camera. I think it was off camera. They became friends. Mm -hmm. They happened to be, they volunteered at, in the same yeah. group in the community. So they got to know each other. Oh, hello. So she got to see a different side of him. Mm -hmm. So it's important. This is something we tell people yeah. to do. You know, engage in activities with other singles and, and get to know people. Become yeah. friends first. Definitely. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming and sharing your story. Thank you. And it's been a pleasure to have you on the program again because you were on a few years ago. Yeah. Right? So 
Welcome back. And we're going to go to a short break. When we come back, we'll see how Yemi and Rudula did in their love quiz and the three most annoying things, which I'm very excited to see how it's going to go. We'll be right back. Hello, YouTubers and everyone following us on Instagram and Facebook. Don't forget to share our programs with your friends and family and subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date with all our new programs coming out every week. And also let us know what you think of the topics. Leave your comments. Welcome back. We're talking today about love at first sight. What we have learned until now is that Elena didn't love me at first sight, but she liked me a lot. At I first did. Sight. <laughs> that was an interesting part of the program. It was. It still is. <laughs> Although I knew about this already, but it's always it's always good hearing it again and again, right? It it does wonders to the male ego. Anyway, <laughs> you know the funny thing is that when we first met, he was all very like, uh, yes, I'm just. Just want to know who you are, but nothing much. Let me see what's your name and where you're from. I don't from. really remember that. I, I think we have <laughs> different see, recollections of what was... happened. <laughs> Actually, we could do another show on this, right? Uh, but let's let's crack on. Let's mm. see what Jenny Cortez Ibanez has for us this week on the One Minute News Bulletin. And welcome to this week's One Minute Bulletin. A new Guinness World Record has been broken recently for the most couples kissing under the mistletoe in Six Flags over Georgia, along with six additional Six Flags parks in the US. There was a total of 839 couples spreading the festive love, or 1,678 people to be more precise, who participated compared to the 201 couples who kissed under the mistletoe in one single venue in 2015. The results were verified by Guinness judge Christina Conlon and she says Six Flags really outdid itself this year by making history and celebrating the holidays by bringing people together from coast to coast to set a new world record. Six Flags Over Georgia Park president Dale Ketzel also expressed his sentiments over this achievement. For the second year in a row at our park, hundreds of guests were a part of this world record and created a live long memory by kissing their loved one under the mistletoe during holiday in the park, which is a tradition in Atlanta. And that's all for this week's One Minute Bulletin. See you again next time. Thanks for that, Jenny. So that was a Guinness World Record being broken by the most couples kissing in one place, I think it was. And that's very heartwarming, very... Uh, good, heartwarming news to have on the program. It is, it is. Thank you so much, Jenny. Now let's watch the love quiz for this week and also the three most annoying things about your partner. Can't wait to see how they do. Let's see. Hello and welcome to today's Love Talk Quiz. I have with me today Yemi and Rudula. How are you guys? Fine. Yes, fine. fine. Oh, I like the enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> well, Love Talk likes to know how well our couples know each other. So today is your turn. Now, the rules are very simple. You, I will ask you each five questions, but you only have 10 seconds to answer each one correctly. Okay, so keep going, keep trying, all right? All right. Drudula, it's your turn. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> First question. When your husband was a child, what did he want to become? A footballer. Correct answer, well done. Mm. Second question, what are you two most likely to argue about? 10 seconds. Oh my gosh, I don't know. Keep trying, keep trying. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, uh, oh my God, that is blank. I don't know. Yeah, you're out of time. He says when the food is not ready on time. Oh, how can I forget? I hear he has very busy schedule, so you know, like, oh, is the food ready? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah? Right. Third question. What's his favorite color? Ten seconds. Blue. Exactly. Well done. I like the, you know, confidence. Fourth question. What does he like to do in his spare time? Ten Watch seconds. Watch movies. 
something along those lines. Uh, you right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you should know this one. Oh. <laughs> Last question. Ready? Yep. Take your time. Actually, no, I should say don't take your time. Give <laughs> me many answers. <laughs> right. What does he like the most about you? Two things, go ahead, 10 seconds. Oh my gosh, that's a hard one. Um, blah, blah, blah. Fashion sense. Something else uh, to do with that? Uh, my hair style. In general, in general. Um, my looks. Yes, and oh, you run out of time. <laughs> oh, he said your personality and oh, wow. you are beautiful. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I like this. Um, Yemi, are you ready? I'm ready. Do you think you're going to do better than your wife? Uh, yeah. We'll see. Oh, oh, we have oh, to you see. hesitated. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's start. First question for you. In general, what gets Dradula angry? Um, 10 seconds. <laughs> when I leave the clothes lying around. No, something else? Um, <laughs> something you like. You run out of time. When he doesn't like my food, she said. Oh, that makes me sad. Oh, wow. <laughs> that makes me sad. <laughs> right, second question. What's her favorite TV series? Uh, EastEnders. Yes. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> well done. Third question. What does Dradula like to do to unwind? You know, she's a bit stressed and then she thinks, oh, I'm going to do this. Um, I would say what is standards. <laughs> it's along those lines, but it's not standards. Keep trying. Uh, to watch crime investigation. I'll, I'll take it as correct. Right about on time, <laughs> just on time. She says she likes to watch a nice movie. Oh, okay. So I'm assuming it could be any movie you say, like, you know, her taste. Yeah. Right, two questions to go. Fourth question. This one is very hard. I'm joking. What is a dress size? 10 seconds. Oh my God. Uh, it's either 14 or, or 12 or 14. Exactly. Well done. Wow, very precise. <laughs> I'm impressed. Okay. Right. Fifth question and last. Concentration, please. What does she like the most about you? Two things. Go ahead. Um, my personality and my determination. Yes. Determination and... She said that she really likes it that you are very hard working, right? So she loves that about you and also your determination. Well done. Well done. I mean it. You did really well. And the score is, are you ready? Three and a half points each. <laughs> you did so well. I'm so proud of you. Well done. Now let's watch the three most annoying things about my partner. I would say she could be on time more. When he suggests for me to go to a restaurant or he says, what restaurant would you like to go to? And then I suggest it and he says, I don't want to go there. I don't like that food. That doesn't help me. Uh, I think we both have this fault, but I think she beats me a little bit more is when she's always on her phone. When he says, oh, let's watch a movie, you know, that's so special. Okay, let's watch a movie. After five minutes, he sleeps. Oh my gosh, that does my head in. So now when he says it, I just say, okay, yeah, but I already prepare what I'm gonna do within 10 minutes so that I know, you know, that won't get to me. Uh, when she talks about cutting her hair, I like it long. So when she talks about cutting it short, um, I think I just get a bit afraid of how it's gonna be. It does end up being, end, end up being good, but the thought of it kind of scares me. He's, he's a, I wouldn't say he's a perfectionist, but he's a bit more of a perfectionist than I am. So his expectations are a lot higher. So he demands from me, which can be very hard at times. But it's making me better. So I guess it's not that annoying, but it, it does get annoying sometimes. So those are the three things that really annoy me.
Welcome back. It's the fourth and final segment of today's show, and we're talking about love at first sight. We want to thank Yemi and Redula for being on the program. Yes. And they did really well on the quiz as well. Indeed. And it was. I really like to hear couples talk about the things that annoy them because. Oh, that's my, my favorite as yeah, well. Because it, it's interesting to see how, even though you get annoyed by what your partner, partner does sometimes, you still love them even more. Of course. And, and the funny thing is, when they are recording the three most annoying things, they happen to say similar things to the other one. So mm -hmm. it's like, oh, but I think that about you. <laughs> so it's really nice. It's, it's a different I think we need to do we need to do one of the three most annoying things about each other at some point. Really? That would be interesting. <laughs> Let's carry on. Well, this is now the part of the advice we have for you who subscribe to the idea of love at first sight or you're excited about it, you're holding out for it. You know, people must be used by now to see us contradicting what most people believe about love. Yeah. So it won't come as a surprise when we say we're not big fans of love at first sight. No, we are not. We know you can really look at someone and have a strong attraction or connection with that person. But to say that this is love at first sight is a whole different ball game. Love is a very strong word. Indeed, and a lot of people use love uh, as a word that they just use any yeah. any time. That's the problem. Now, love implies that you are willing to love that person in spite of their imperfections and the things in them that may annoy you or that you may not be a fan of. Mm -hmm. But how can you say that this is true if you don't know who they are? How can you say you love them in spite of their imperfections if you don't know what their imperfections are? Yeah, right? Usually people break up well before that stage, so they never get to know what That's love right. is. You know, usually people who tend to love at first sight fall out of love very quickly. And it's not long before they are head over heels with someone else. I don't know if you've noticed that, mm -hmm. you know, and this tends to diminish the meaning of what love truly is about. As you truly learn about someone and see their temper, their flaws, their quirky habits, and still want to be with them, perhaps even more so, this is when you can truly say that you love someone. I think this is the key. That's the key. I if you, agree with you. If, you. if you can see all the imperfections, all the problems, the things that sometimes you don't like, but still your love for that person is, an, is even more intense, mm -hmm. that's when you can truly say you love someone. I agree, you know. We know that this is not the fairy tale people want to hear, but here is where it really gets better. The truth is that years of loving someone is better than love at first sight. James and I have been together for over 15 years and things are now better than when we first started. Absolutely. This is the best part of the relationship. And perhaps the most important part of the advice we have for you is this. Learn to take things slow. If you meet someone you really like, don't rush through things. Mm -hmm. Subscribing to the idea that you love someone you just met will impair your judgment of making a sound decision, and this can have painful results. You know, I just wanted to do a quick note on the side here that many people think that we are just work colleagues. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we are a couple, a real couple, and we are not here talking about something we, we don't know. So I just wanted to mention that because I know people out there, some people think we are just colleagues mm -hmm. pretending to be a couple, and no, we are actually married in real life. <laughs> anyway, now let's watch the final boys versus girls challenge for 2016 at the Sozai Cooking School with Tapiwa and Yasmin. So th this is ideal for like couples. Do you get oh, couples yeah. that come here very yeah, often? Yeah, yeah. We do private classes or just joining our normal class. Then there are lots of great com um, conversation they're having. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this would be we, a really nice yeah. first date. Or <laughs> yeah, got to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, nice. she's nice and neat. Or you know. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Very creative. Okay. Um, now is the part of decorating the inside, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay. So. I'm gonna go for 
some of these to start with. Yep. I'm gonna put them at the bottom like this. Uh, Make sure your this edge is matching to the bamboo mat. Oh, okay. It's okay. You can lift it. One break. It's easier for you. Ideally, you do it before putting the fillings on, but okay. you managed. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Just put this. Okay. Let's roll. Use your thumb underneath the bamboo mat. You're gonna give a nice sushi hug. Lift it up. Meeting to the end of rice and hold. Give it a nice hug there. Nice hug, yeah. Not too sque squeezy or not too loose. Just okay. about right hug. Here we go. Ready to cut? Yes. This is a competition. <laughs> See, I show you the sushi making and showing the past night. Yes. <laughs> How are you doing over there? <clears throat> I'm almost there. Well, I'm done, so wow. need to catch up. Very good. <laughs> I think the girls are going to win today. Uh, <clears throat> the question you were interested in. Yes. Yeah, let's just use this. Lift your umbly. Three parts mm -hmm. and origami technique. Just twist it. So do we rip it from this side? It doesn't matter. Yeah. It will. Doesn't it will peel. It will peel. Yeah, naturally. Okay. Just your nail. Look at this one. Okay. Let me keep it moving. I'm gonna try to do something different. Something different. <laughs> Why not? Go for it, please. Okay, so now we have finished our competition and it's now time to find out who's won. Yes. Look at these masterpieces. Fun. It's very really difficult. So this is just the front. It's a presentation so way. This is the front. Do you have any theme? Um, <laughs> the theme of this is look delicious, taste good. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and it's difficult part. Oh, I know. Um, what I found difficult, to be honest, um, was the decoration at the end. Oh. Yes, I was trying to learn from what you did with the um, origami style. Yeah, and Bandana. so I tried to kind of make it work, but this is what I came up really with. Really creative, isn't it? Thank you. Very good. Want to trust me? Any difficult <coughs> parts? Um, Again, the same with him, like trying to do the decoration, trying to do like the origami part. Mmm, difficult. Any theme <laughs> for your any title? Um, sweet and simple. Oh, like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really difficult. But I got to, I got to judge. This is competition. <laughs> I think overall, you're the winner. The Yay! girls, yes, me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <Well done. laughs> oh. Look at the beautiful <laughs> presentation. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. So, um, <laughs> what do you... Sorry, but really good, really good try. I, I think, um... <laughs> I, I think we need a, a second judge. I'm, I'm oh, joking. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Only two. I'm joking. No, I think she did, she did deserve to win because I saw the effort that went into that, especially at the end, and it does look good. Touch, thank yes, you. Yes, she, she did give it that, that touch. Okay, great news. So the woman won, and I'm sure we're going to continue to win. <laughs> okay, I, I mean... Yes, we, we lost. We can accept we lost, boys. But next week, it's our time again. <laughs> we'll so thank you, Sozai Cooking School. I, I'm sure we'll be back here again because please we had a lot of fun. Please come and see us again. Yes, yes please do. definitely, definitely. Yes. Guys, so if you want to watch this, the full version of the cooking class, go ahead to our YouTube channel. Um, you can type in Love Talk Show. And on the playlist, we have Trip for Two. You can watch the full version of the cooking class. We had so much fun. There's so many bits and pieces you're going to learn from there. It was fun. Um, so, see you again next time here on Trip, Trip for Two. two. Very well done to Yasmin. Yasmin won the challenge and I've pretty much resigned by now to the fact that the girls may Sorry. have won this year. There's always 2017. <laughs> You'll get to see who the winner is in Love Talk Top Moments of 2016 in the new year. By the way, next week we have something special for you. We oh, went to record our holiday special program at the Lost Gardens of Heligan 
It was amazing. What a place. It was our second time there. The weather didn't really help, but it made it even a little bit more magical, shall it I say. It was so good. Really nice, beautiful place for you to take your family, for you to go and spend some time with uh, the person you love or whatever. That's even, it. So even a friend. Don't miss next week's program. By the way, we'll be talking about running your relationship like a business. We want to thank Yemi and Dredula for being on the program today. Our stylist, Phoebe Brannick. Yeah. And if you have any questions regarding today's show, if you want to be a guest on the show, get in touch with us. We also want to say a big thank you to Sozai Cooking School. Thank you so much for allowing us to film there. Everything looked so beautiful and so tasty. Absolutely. So enjoy your holidays. And, and if, you, if you want to get in touch, send us an email to questions at lovetalkshow.com. TV. Don't forget to visit our Facebook and Instagram page and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Enjoy the Definitely. holidays, as Elena said, yes. and we'll see you next time. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Bye. Was it love at first sight with you? No. <laughs> I liked you first, first time. No, of course, I liked you too. But I liked you a lot. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> anyway, let's see what's coming up on today's show. <laughs> I love that. Was that okay? <laughs> keep <laughs> keep that on. So impressed. <laughs> 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 Clean. <laughs> All right. Okay. 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 Let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, I broke my ring. Is it a problem with continuity? <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. Oh no, I liked it. All right then. Absolutely. Well, now we're gonna watch um, the love quiz for this week and also the three most annoying things about your partner with our guests today. Very interesting. Shall we do that again? Yes. yes. <laughs> we know that this is not really the fairy tale people want to hear, but here is, here is. Sorry, I need to do this again. We know that this is not what people want to hear, but. The fairy tale. We know that this is not the fairy tale people want to hear about, but here is what is. Here is what. Here is where it really gets. I know, big. I always have problems saying here is. You'll get to know the results uh, in our holiday, our New Year special. Uh. <laughs> George, come in here, let's do this um, uh, selfie video thing for the New Year, please. No, 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 in your phone, on your phone. Okay, so great news, the women won this week and I'm sure it will continue that way. <laughs> but um, thank you so much, um, Sozai, um, cooking show for, oh gosh. <laughs> and that's all for today's Love Talk show. Be sure to tune in next week to learn more on how to love intelligently.